Today, we're discussing the announced change to the drinking water system coming in 7 Days to Die Alpha 21. Now we've got a lot of info to cover and no time to waste, so let's get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, Alpha 21 for 7 Days to Die is coming soon. Ish. To be honest, ladies and gentlemen, we do not know exactly when Alpha 21 is going to drop. The Fun Pimps have not made any announcements regarding that. However, they have released a lot of information about the upcoming changes to expect in Alpha 21. And one announcement that we have received is that there will be a change to the drinking water system in Alpha 21. So today, we are going to break down this announcement. We'll discuss what exactly is changing, we'll discuss the reasons that the Fun Pimps have given for the change, and lastly, I will give you my thoughts and observations on the upcoming changes to the drinking water system. So let's start off with what exactly is changing. In order to find out this information, we're going to hit up the 7 Days to Die forum, specifically the Dev Diary for Alpha 21. As you see here, we see the Drinking Water Rebalance section. It states that murky water is the only water that you will find in loot. Empty glass bottles have been removed completely from the game. They've added a new workstation called the Dew Collector. Players can now drink directly from water sources with an empty hand and a pot is required to boil murky water. So this is just the bullet points. It doesn't really go into too much detail on what exactly that means. Thankfully, one of the devs has given us a more detailed outline of what to expect. Later on in the forums, one of the devs chimes in and says this. Day one, you are given one jar of water at spawn. When that jar is consumed, the jar is not returned to your inventory. This mechanic was removed to promote survival aspects as well as the function of the new dew collector. Having a hard time finding more water? You can now drink from bodies of water by looking at the water with empty hands, waiting a moment without moving, and then pressing E to drink. He goes on to say, murky water can no longer be boiled without a cooking pot. This was skipping the risk murky water has if consumed. Snowballs are no longer a means to making water. Players could dig up stacks of snowballs and never have to find water again. They are still used in the yucca juice smoothie or for throwing at your friends. Loot has been adjusted so that drinks are no longer found in cabinets. There are just way too many cabinets in the game. Many loot tables have been adjusted to only find murky water. There are still rare chances to find water and other drinks in special loot containers. So that was all of the day one section. Now let's move on to day two through seven. Work on trader quests or looting POIs to find the resources needed for crafting a dew collector. Once placed, a dew collector will slowly start to fill the bar on the first slot. When the bar is full, a jar of water will spawn in that slot. Slots are filled based on time only and fills with or without the player being near it. Works with the chunk unloaded. The dew collector does not work any faster with rainfall. The default settings are approximately three jars of water every 24 hours in game. 60 minute default real time. Random rolls can make this a few game hours shorter or longer. So that gives us a pretty straightforward outline of what exactly this drinking water change entails. So now let's move on to the why? Why exactly did the Fun Pimps feel that this change was necessary? In order to start this topic, we're going to go back to the very first section of the post that I just read. The dev says, the biggest takeaway from all of these changes is to try to bring back the feeling of survival. So the dev's ultimate goal for this change is to bring back and enhance the survival aspect of Seven Days to Die. In another post on the forum, Roland goes into much more detail as to why this change was made. He says, The point is not to make everyone thirstier. The point is to make it so that having an easily renewable source of good water is more of a process and a journey. So by this, we learned that the Fun Pimps are trying to enhance the survival aspect. Instead of making potable water easily attainable on day one, they want it to be more of a process. So now that we've covered the what and the why of the change, allow me to give you my thoughts and 
important observations on the upcoming drinking water chain. I'm gonna give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're gonna start off with the good. I believe that focusing on the survival aspect of Seven Days to Die and trying to enhance that aspect of the game is definitely a good thing. If we're being honest, ladies and gentlemen, water is too plentiful in the current version. It is very easy to get your hands on potable water. In fact, I have demonstrated multiple times how you can create yourself an infinite water supply with just a handful of blocks and a bucket. The survival aspect of this game has taken a backseat, and it is nice to see the fun pimps focusing a little bit of attention on this aspect of the game. Now, there are some out there who find that this change is weird. They point out that after you drink the water, what happens to the bottle? It just disappears? You eat it? You throw it on the ground? And to be honest, what I've first thought about this change, I had a similar reaction. I was like, well, that doesn't make sense. However, I have to give the Fun Pimps a little bit of credit. Let me point you to this post by Roland, because I think he makes a very good point. While it does seem weird that the jars are just being removed, Roland states that this change does bring consistency to the universe. No other substance in a container returns the empty container. Only canned food and drink did. Now, those those two exceptions work the same way as the rest and are no longer exceptions. For instance, when you use oil, no empty oil can returns and you can't craft an empty oil can. When you use gas, no empty gas can returns and you can't craft an empty gas can. When you use stew, no empty bowl returns and you can't craft an empty bowl. When you use acid, no empty bottle returns and you can't craft an empty acid bottle. So you have to give the fun pimps a little bit of credit it, this is a very valid point. It's a good point. Food and drink are the only items in the game currently that you do get back in empty container. So while this change does seem weird, it does bring a little bit more consistency to the world of Seven Days to Die. However, now let's move on to the bad. Because while yes, removing the empty jars does bring a little bit more consistency to the world, this change and the outlined reason for the change could have been done in a better way. Empty jars are not the problem. Making the liquid inside the jars potable is the problem. Reducing water drops in loot is a good start, and that should have been part of a larger solution. Instead of outright removing the empty jars, you could have made murky water more difficult to purify. There are several ways they could have accomplished the same goal without outright removing the empty jars from the game. They could utilize the radiation mechanic. They could require filter and boiling. There are multiple possible solutions without removing the empty jars. But to be honest, ladies and gentlemen, it really didn't bother me all that much. It wasn't my main concern with this change. So let's move on to the ugly. Now, in order to outline my biggest concern, my biggest gripe with this change, we first have to make a pit stop at the Steam page for Seven Days to Die. The Fun Pimps are marketing this game as such. Play the definitive zombie survival sandbox RPG that came first. The Fun Pimps are selling this game as a sandbox game. It is their narrative it is their description of this game. When you use the term sandbox to describe your game, you are telling players what to expect. In a sandbox game, players use the tools provided to creatively overcome the challenges presented in the game. There are multiple paths, multiple roads to the same destination. Player agency and creativity is the key. And the Fun Pimps are highlighting this fact and making it a central theme of their game in their own words, in their own narrative, in their own marketing. However, this change is the antithesis to the concept of sandbox design. With this change, there is literally one path 
one road to overcome the challenge of water in seven days to die. The only way to solve this problem is with the trader. You must take quests from the trader to get the filter as a reward. The filter is an essential ingredient in the crafting recipe of the new Dew Collector workstation. In order to get your hands on that filter, you have to either complete quests from the trader and get that filter as a reward, or purchase the filter directly from the trader. All roads, and in this instance all means one, lead to the trader. The devs did say there is a rare chance to loot a filter, but that rare chance seems to be extremely rare. Roland stated in a post on the forum that he has never found a filter in loot. This change forces the players to rely even more heavily on the traders, completely removing player agency and creativity. Sadly, this is just the latest example in a very long line of changes that do just that. And fun pimps, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Allow me to direct your attention to this post. When receiving pushback about the new drinking water system, a dev posted this. The dew collector is not the only way to get jars of water. Do you guys not quest or loot POIs? There is plenty of murky water out there to be found. Well, simple answer, no. Not all players do enjoy questing and looting. Some players try to minimize trader interactions as much as possible, but this change completely removes that possibility. Once again, it is the Fun Pimps narrative that this is a sandbox game. They market it as such, and yet they get annoyed when players don't play in the sandbox the right way. It's like this. The Fun Pimps craft a giant sandbox, throw in a bucket and a shovel and say, go to town, have fun. Players pick up the bucket and shovel and start to craft a beautiful sandcastle. No, 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 no. You're not supposed to build it that way. So the Fun Pimps run in, they kick over the castle and wrench the bucket and shovel out of the player's hands. You cannot market this game as a sandbox and continually make changes that remove player agency and creativity. You cannot then go on to be shocked at the response when the players point out the fact that you are contradicting your own narrative. You market this game as a sandbox. You repeatedly say that player agency and creativity is so important to you. This is your narrative. Once again, you can't have your cake and eat it too. But that is just one man's opinion, folks. And now I'd like to hear from you. What are your feelings on the upcoming change to the drinking water system? Comment below and let me know. And if you enjoyed this update video for Alpha 21, check out my Alpha 21 update video on the new Learn by Looting system. You can access this video by clicking the box in the top right corner of the screen. But for now, this is Savin saying thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll catch you in the next one.